And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the new heavyweight champion of the world, Cassius Clay. Cassius, uh, you know, I was outside there looking for a lot of folks who, uh, who bet on uh, Clay, and uh, everybody did. It seems I couldn't find uh, one who bet on this. Ain't, ain't people hypocritical, Jim? Now everybody bet on me. Ain't that something? How did you feel during the fight? When did you feel that you, you, you started to get the confidence? To well, I on? thought I would knock him out in the first round. Uh, I believe that was one of my best rounds. I was hitting him with so many hooks and right crosses, he was about out. But uh, after the first round, I saw nothing but fear in his eyes. And I'm so happy now. I don't have to talk as loud as I used to. I told the world what I would do. I just missed my prediction in one round. If he had came out uh, in, what, in the eighth round, I would have knocked him out. And my prediction would have been accurate. I would have gotten listening in eight, like I've been telling the world. But uh, so now the people, a lot of people were saying that if I beat Sonny Dustin, all of the people out there, you know who you are, a lot of the high school children I know, were saying if he beats Sonny Dustin, then I know it was a fix. So uh, what made it so good, I didn't knock him out. They can't say it was a fix or nothing like that because I didn't stop the fight. The doctor and the referee stopped the fight. He couldn't see. I heard they just took him to Christian Hospital. Uh, He's a nice Cassius, fellow. One thing, <coughs> what are your plans? Would you give Liston a, a chance again? Well, Jim, I don't know if the public would want it. I'll give Liston a chance any time he wanted. He's a nice fighter. A little more experience, he'll be able to beat me. But uh, he needs a little more experience. Do you think it has anything to do with your being a member of the Black Muslims? No, the Black Muslim is the name you give it and the press give it. We're not Black Muslims. My religion is Islam, which means peace. Um, the followers are called Muslims, and that Muslim is a man who submits entirely to the will of Almighty God. A Muslim is a clean, righteous man. The United Nations building are full of Muslims. All uh, the Pope went over into Muslim countries asking for peace. The presidents travels and, and asked us for peace all over the Muslim worlds and all worlds. And uh, if you attack, if I'm attacked, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not even thinking about that. If I'm attacked for religion of peace, then that means uh, the American uh, the man's guilty. You don't say you guilty. You hold court, and then you find him guilty and prove it. And the public and the jury are satisfied. And then you say he's guilty. Then you condemn him. You just don't tell a man he murdered somebody without giving him a chance to explain or without uh, letting the world see why you're condemning him. So if I'm going to be condemned, uh, if the world, <clears throat> excuse me, heavyweight championship is going to be taken from me, then show everybody why. You know, I don't know why, so I want to know why is it that you're doing it. See, overall, people don't want peace. And I'm a one man and the whole world is watching me, so it's all, you should be awful careful of how you attack the man like if you're going to take the crown, or if they're going to take the crown, have a good reason for taking it. And religion is the last thing you can jump on because 750 more million are with this and recognize me as their brother. So hurting me is, you're not attacking Cassius Clay now. This will be an international problem. <clears throat> this will have to go to the UN. Every time I quit my religion, I'll die right here in this seat before I lose faith in Almighty God. But uh, like, and, uh, uh, like I said, I haven't lost no title, and before I lose it, then you're going to have to, you got 22 million Negroes in uproar, they waiting to hear what's going to happen, they know I'm all right, they know I'm clean, and if you, I mean, you just, you, see, you don't seem to like the religion of Islam, so you won't do nothing, they look like to me, but convert all the rest of them to it, because I've got calls already, I wouldn't put no names in it to put nobody on the spot, but various civil rights leaders have called me already, and they're in uproar, and they want to know what this is all about, and they don't know, none of them like it. Taking nobody else's titles, people such as Sonny Liston, people who uh, have been in jail 15 or 20 times, women scandals, and uh, people who've carrying pistols and caught in the cars, breaking speed limits with guns and all of that deadly weapons, and they don't get suspended. So all you have to do is tell the world what's the reason for suspending me. What do you think is the reason? I don't know. I'm not the judge. I'm not the judge. I just want to know what I'm calling up. <clears throat> I'm going to call me a nationwide, uh, international press conference. And as a matter of fact, go to the UN and see a lot of more people, and then we tell the world they're going to want to know why. And so, since they uh, made the judgment that uh, they want to strip me of my title, and I'm not can't nobody even beat me and take it. So, since some man is going to take it, then have an intelligent reason to the public why you want to take it. That's all. How do you feel about the WBA statement? What statement was that? 
that you would be stripped of your title and suspended indefinitely. Oh, that's uh, that's all right, but I'd like to know why, what reason would they have to do that? They never, what you mean by appeal, I'm having a, I'm calling a nice meeting with all of these fellows and <clears throat> my managers and uh, a few uh, prime ministers from other countries who want to know about it. I had a few calls today from a few delegates from Egypt and Africa who want to know what's this all about because all of the youth love me and around here in Harlem and everybody love me, all the young people like me and they all my clean image. I have no jail records. I've never been never been in those trouble as far as women scandals and things are concerned. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I, I'm a clean person, never been in jail. So all I want to know is why do you take the title? When do you plan to hold this meeting, this press conference? Well, as soon as we can get it, as soon as I can get all of my uh, public relation people together and we'll work on it and see what's What's this all about? You know, I just got the word today. I don't know what it's all about. I know can't nobody in the world beat me, so the only way I will lose a title is for somebody to take it, because I cannot be beat. What do you hope to accomplish at this meeting? Are you going to map out a plan? No, no, no plan or nothing. We are just want to like hold a little court. Champion. Oh, well, I don't know if I don't project, project a good picture of a world champion. I'm the only real world champion because I'm the only one who have projected an image that who can be justified as saying he's a real world champion. I receive 50 and 60 letters every day from all over Egypt, Asia, Africa, England, Sweden, uh, London, Rome. I get letters from everywhere. Young people want my photographs. I can't walk the streets of Harlem without thousands of young people following me. Uh, what you mean project a good image? Uh, image to who? Who don't like the image that I project? That's the question. Who don't like it? Um, X, a man who the police have charged has a creed of violence. Well, I've never seen uh, him do no violence. The only violence I've seen, have seen done was down in, all through the South when they blow up churches and kill all these people. And I've heard him talk about how we've been treated, and you call that violence. But I've never heard him say nothing about no violence. But as far as linking me with him or something like that, I don't know nothing about his plans or his future plans or what he's doing. I follow the honor Elijah Muhammad. Well, would you leave the um, black Muslim Islam if, uh, if you thought it might help you get back your title? Oh, my well, keep it, excuse me. No, I didn't, I didn't have no meet with Malcolm X. Who said that? Where well, he came in the hotel and he sat, was in your room for a couple of hours. Mm, no, Cuff, he's, he's there for about an hour, so he can go where he want to. I'm free, I talk, and go where I want to. Uh, what did you discuss? Mm, that's my business. If uh, the WBA succeeds in taking the title away from you, what will happen to your boxing career? I don't, I don't know. First, we'll have to. I'd take cross that bridge when I get to it. I'm planning on taking a world tour, and uh, all throughout the Asian, African countries, and it'll be something good to talk about on why they took it, if they take it. Another reason given for why the title was supposedly taken from you, or why it will be, is that you made a business deal before the fight with Sonny Liston Productions. No, not me. You'll have to talk to my ten managers who talked with Sonny Liston's trainers for about 24 hours on the subject of. Uh, title defense and all through the past if you're going to condemn fighters for uh, only fix, fixing contracts just to have another shot at the title if they should lose it then you'll have to condemn a whole lot of more fighters who have done the same thing that's an awful weak statement but the weakest thing I've heard yet was getting I'm not a good you, image for the youth. Uh, for my people, I'm the best image in the world. They tell me that I'm the only one to check in hotels like this and live in neighborhoods like this and give them something to look up to. So that's an awful weak thing to say. Next step you're going to be taking to fight this WBA decision? Well, I wouldn't say I'm fighting the decision. I'm asking questions on what's, what's the trouble. Why, why would somebody want to take a person's title like mine you know I'm Olympic champion won the gold medal for the country goodwill ambassador for this great country America and uh, the world heavyweight champion won the title honestly and clean didn't nobody believe I would do it but I did it and also they ranked me as the savior and the resurrect of the fight game and uh, I don't know uh, uh, my question would be to you know get a little press conference going a few people with me to talk this thing over and see what it's all about. When will this take place? Mm, whenever the uh, people will make the decision. Uh, if they're wise, they'll think before they make such, you know, wild uh, thing, do things like that, moves like that. The WBA has said that a number of people have written them asking that your title be taken away. Uh, do you care about this? 
No, it just goes to show you that you just don't have to be an integrator to catch hell. You can live with your own people, be yourself, accept your own, and you catch more hell than the ones who you don't want busting down your restaurants. So it only, I'm, I believe God's got me here in his example to just show the people that uh, their way necessarily getting freedom just don't have to be right. All you have to do is be quiet, accept your own, be yourself, and you catch more hell than integrators. Are you concerned with... Are you concerned with what's been called world opinion? What you mean? I don't know what you mean by that. Do you think, uh, is it important to you what people think of you? Well, it's important what people think as long as you project the right image. Uh, a lot of things you say about people that are not true. A lot of things you say about Malcolm X that's not true. I know it's not true. And uh, this turns me to think and do what I'm doing now because the things you do, the things you cut, the words you twist in the press, you do it deliberately and it gives the people a wrong image of you. And uh, I know a lot of things that uh, are true that I've been taught because you show me every day in reality. How do you feel about the WBA announcement? Do you plan to appeal this? Okay. Do you plan to appeal? This? You're affiliated with Malcolm X. And remarks that you made. That will be straightened out with the government or whoever I have to face when it comes to that. Are you apologizing for having made those statements at this time? To, uh, to, uh, I'm apologizing to have made them to newspaper reporters. Well, and, uh, you, and you apologize for having made them to this commission, to the governor, to the people of Illinois, and to the people of the United States. I did not make, I'll take that up with the, my lawyers will take that up with the uh, proper people uh, in authority over there. Well, then you're, you, you're not apologizing for the unpatriotic uh, uh, statements that you made. That'll be taken up with the government. Examine the State Athletic Commission files relating to the proposed boxing match between Ernest Terrell and Cassius Clay, also known as Muhammad Ali, on March 29, 1966, in Chicago. In the limited time available, I have determined that the proposed boxing match under the sponsorship of National Sports Promotions, Inc. cannot legally be held. Annual license, licenses were approved and issued to Mr. Terrell and Mr. Clay by the State Athletic Commission at the Commission's meeting in Chicago on February 8, 1966. An annual license that appears that its license violates the law. In addition, the applications made by Mr. Terrell and Mr. Clay for their annual license appear not to be in compliance with some requirements of Section 23 of the Act. Well, first of all, I would like to say I'm not here to make a showdown plea as the press has played up. I'm not here to apologize in the way that the press uh, has projected that I would apologize. I received a call in Miami from a few people who are connected with the fight and a few responsible people who I trust because certain people over my beliefs and my comments would be hurt financially. It was only to apologize for what embarrassment or pressures that I put you under, not me. And my apology was also uh, I apologize for saying things to the newspapers that I should have said to the uh, government officials or to draft board rather, I mean to say. I apologize for opening my mouth and saying things that should have been taken up with them and not with just uh, newspaper writers over the telephone. And as concerned, I'm willing to fight. I'm in top condition to go along with the fight to uh, help the people who have money invested and who stand a lot to lose. I didn't intend to hurt anybody who had children or sons that are dying and um, that are hurt in Vietnam. So this Whether you're is, apologizing for the unpatriotic remarks that you made. Sir? 
I'm asking you if you apologize for the unpatriotic remarks that you made. I'm not apologizing for nothing like that because I don't have to. I'm apologizing to the uh, armed, the people who are in charge of the selective service. Those are the people that we'll take this up with. I'm not in court now for that. I'm a champ of the world. This is athletic commissioner, and I'm here to fight for the title, and I'm just apologizing for what I said to the newspapers and to the press when I should have had these things to say, and they will from now on be said with the people themselves who are in charge of this. Commissioners, have any questions to ask for the witness? Mr. Clay. Muhammad Ali, sir. Mr. Clay. Muhammad Ali, uh, sir. Mr. Muhammad Ali, either yes, one. Sir. Just Muhammad Ali. When you appeared before this commission before, if I recall correctly, you said you were the people's champion.